Extrinsic Semiconductor Part 1 Objective To study P-type extrinsic semiconductor A pure semiconductor like silicon is called an intrinsic semiconductor. The conduction of electricity in silicon takes place due to both the intrinsic charge carriers, the free electrons and the holes, which are the same in number Ne equals NH equals Ni. The number of charge carriers in silicon is very small as compared to that in a conductor like copper. Therefore, the intrinsic semiconductor has a low conductivity. Electrical conductivity of a semiconductor can be increased to a great extent by increasing the number of free electrons or holes in it. This is achieved by a process called doping. Doping is a process of deliberate addition of desirable impurity atoms trivalent or pentavalent to a pure semiconductor in a controlled manner. A doped semiconductor is called an extrinsic semiconductor. They are of two types. One, P-type semiconductor doped with a trivalent impurity. Two, N-type semiconductor doped with a pentavalent impurity. P-type semiconductor when a pure semiconductor like silicon is doped with trivalent impurity such as boron, three valence electrons of the boron atom form covalent bonds with the electrons of the adjoining silicon atoms. The fourth covalent bond is incomplete due to the deficiency of an electron, which gives rise to a hole in the impurity atom. As each impurity atom added contributes a hole, there is a remarkable increase in the number of holes. The holes created by the trivalent impurity atoms have a tendency to accept electrons. Therefore, the trivalent impurity atoms are called the acceptors and the energy level of these holes is known as the acceptor level. Further, the valence electron of the neighboring silicon atom requires a little extra energy to fill this hole in impurity atom. This means the energy level of the holes created by impurity atom is a little above the energy level of the valence electrons. The energy difference between the acceptor level and the highest energy level of the valence band varies from 0.01 to 0.05 electron volts. This is much smaller as compared to the forbidden energy gap of 1.17 electron volts. At room temperature, the valence electrons having thermal energy are easily transferred to the acceptor level and leave behind a large number of holes in the valence band. Any electron breaking free from the neighboring bond gets trapped in a hole. The hole effectively moves to the side of the electron. As this process continues, the holes move in the valence band in a direction opposite to the movement of the electrons. These holes act as current carriers in a P-type semiconductor. In P-type, the valence band holes outnumber the conduction electrons generated by thermal agitation by many orders of magnitude. Hence, the holes are referred to as the majority charge carriers and the free electrons as the minority charge carriers. Thus, the electrical conductivity of the semiconductor is greatly enhanced due to the increased number of holes as the charge carriers. Summary The P-type and N-type semiconductors are obtained by doping of pure semiconductor with trivalent and pentavalent impurities, respectively. In the P-type material, NH is extremely greater than NE. The holes are the majority charge carriers and free electrons are the minority charge carrier. Part 2 Objective To study N-type extrinsic semiconductor N-type semiconductor when a pure semiconductor like silicon is doped with pentavalent impurity such as arsenic, four of its valence electrons form covalent bonds with the adjoining silicon atoms. The fifth electron is very loosely bound with the arsenic atom. This electron on acquiring a little energy leaves the impurity atom and becomes a free electron. The pentavalent impurity atoms thus donate electrons for conduction to the semiconductor crystal. Hence, they are called donors and the energy level of the donated electrons is called the donor level. 
In other words, the energy level of these electrons is a little below the lowest energy level of the conduction band. At room temperature, the donor level electrons can easily move into the conduction band. The conduction band electrons outnumber the holes in the valence band generated by thermal agitation by many orders of magnitude. Hence, the free electrons are referred to as the majority charge carriers and the holes as the minority charge carriers. These electrons in the conduction band are responsible for the conduction of current in the n-type semiconductor. Thus, the electrical conductivity of the semiconductor is greatly enhanced due to the remarkable increase in the number of free electrons. As the net charge in both p-type and n-type is zero, doping does not disturb the neutrality of the semiconductor. Conductivity of extrinsic semiconductors depends not only on the temperature but also on the extent of doping. That is, one part of a donor impurity per 10 to the power 9 parts of germanium increases its conductivity by a factor of nearly 10 to the power 3. Hence, we are in a position to understand how doping can produce a dramatic change in the electrical conductivity of a semiconductor. Summary in an N-type material, Ne is extremely larger than NH. We refer to the large number of free electrons as the majority charge carriers and the relatively small number of holes as the minority charge carriers. The current in the extrinsic semiconductor is mainly due to the majority charge carriers in it. The electrical conductivity of the extrinsic semiconductors depends on the temperature and the extent of doping. It is to be noted that both P-type and N-type semiconductors are electrically neutral.